Welcome to the video. Today we're going to look at how to create your own Remedy multi-track uh, musical little file. And uh, really, instead of loading one of the defaults that come with Remedy, which are basically all public domain multi-track MIDI files, create your own and let your imagination take you to new places. So, uh, today's video we're not going to create anything that sounds musically interesting um, as an example but it's just simply the mechanics of how you would do that your imagination will take you from there to where you want to go so to make that file we don't even need remedy so I can get rid of this for now and we'll come back to that later what we do need now is instruments or ideas that will help us to build that file. And probably there's nothing better than um, a scaler or Insta Composer. And you could use some of the default Insta Composer presets would do really well. Um, but since more people have Scalar, we're going to do this little demonstration with some uh, Scalar patterns and chords. All right, we have our default Scalar with its default sound. Now let's find our chord progression to start this off with. And instead of classical, today we'll go with like a pop. And we can try pop two. And we have it up here. It's a long one. We won't use all of these chords, but... That sounds good for demonstration purposes. Let's drag it down so we know what chords we're using. And we don't have any performance turned on or anything. We don't need that yet. But what we want to do is change this from two beats to four beats because we want every chord to take up a full four beats or a measure of music in your DAW and uh, that will help this whole situation out. So let's drag these six chords in to the DAW with four beats setting which means we get exactly what we want. And so we have four notes that make up this chord and in this case it's a C major and that takes up one full measure of music if you have your uh, DAW set up to 4-4 four, four time signature and we're at 100 beats per minute so it's a very standard type of thing we could change this to 120 but that's fine and but for the idea of making a multi-track re-midi file it's a good place to start where you have your chords taking one full measure and that's where we want to be. Next we're going to start to divide this to just the chords and we're going to separate out the bass track and we're going to make a little movement in the bass track. So what we want to do now is create four MIDI tracks. So go here, add MIDI track and we'll say we want four of them add them and the first one we want to be renamed to chords second one can be renamed to uh, bass uh, third one can be uh, something like pattern one for now we may change that to uh, something like melody or rhythm later but right now we're just starting with basic ideas pattern two. All right, so we have these four tracks that we can drag out a little bit to make them slightly bigger to see. And we're going to drag uh, this original and copy it down to the chords. And we're going to drag it and copy it to the bass. And for now we select just the chords track we get rid of the bass notes because we want to separate things to have more control. And then we go to the copied bass track over here and we do the opposite where we get rid of the chords and keep the bass. 
And next, we're going to add a chord track so that when we make edits on these notes, they will all adhere to the musical progression. All right, so I have added the chord track, which I like to mute because I don't want it playing anything up there. I just want to have the chords being played by different instruments. So, all right, um, what we want to do is very simple. We want to take these chords that we've separated from the bass notes. So we have simple triads here. And that's exactly what we want. So we can go to that track and um, with this selected, those chords selected, I can go to Project, Chord Track, Create Chord Symbols, uh, symbols and I have that set to my hotkey of B, but in case you don't, that's how you do it. Do this default, just say OK, and boom, we've got our chords up here. And did you notice that everything turned green on the notes down here? That is because we have, as we usually do, this in our editor down here, we have that set to show us the chord track notes color-coded to help us keep in the notes of the chord or the notes of the scale. Very, very helpful. So now we can add all kinds of patterns, rhythms, and melodies, and everything is going to be under control even if you don't know anything about harmony or how to arrange music in any way, the color code system has you, has you covered. So let's, because these chords here are all set up inside Scalar, and this might be a very good time to save your project. So you have this always to reference and come back and make edits and changes to your Remidi multi-track that we're creating. Um, yeah, just save the file and you'll always be able to come back and make changes and expand on this idea. But since we're using the simplest of basic ideas, um, we're just going to turn on performance at our very first performance. Don't even care what it is, but I'm sure it'll sound something interesting. And let's listen. And I'm just pressing down the first chord here. Press down the second one. So that's beautiful right from the beginning. So really, we're just adding performance notes on top of these chords. So just for to do it really quickly, because performance is turned on now, that's activated, when we drag these chords out now again onto the first pattern track, we will see that we get the chords, the original chord notes down below but we also get this beautiful little rhythmic idea up here. And really, that's all we want for this track. You could keep these notes down here. They'll sound good, but they might cloudy up your bass, which we have on a separate track, and we want control over our bass separately. So delete those for now. And we have our first um, chord um, pattern based on our original chord progression. And that's exactly what we want. We see that a couple notes are blue. That means they're not uh, perfectly in this chord or make up notes of this chord, but they are in the scale of what Cubase considers what this would be as a scale. So these are perfectly fine for right now. We could change those to make them sound even more generic, but they're fine right where they are. One thing you may notice is you, the dynamics in the velocity isn't very much. Uh, one tip is to go back and turn on humanize and have the velocity set, which means you will get a lot more variety in the velocity if we redo this. And that's what I'm going to do just to demonstrate that that's available, that option. We delete that. We drag it now with the humanize also turned on. That will give us more dynamics in our velocity. And that's exactly what we get down here, a very more dynamic uh, velocity in all of these notes. But we again have to delete these bottom notes that we just don't happen to want right now. 
but we have this beautiful little melody notes up here. We could even delete these notes because we're going to add another pattern and we don't want it to get too busy and we don't want instruments stepping on other instruments too much. So let's delete those two. Now, if we listen to this together, um, we've got a certain musical idea already progressing, progressing here. We can turn off performance for now. We don't want duplicate notes being fired off. We just want to hear what we have right now. And then it loops uh, to the other side and starts over again. Beautiful little musical idea, very basic, straight out of the box. But this is teaching us how we would go about to do this. So next we're going to add maybe another little pattern on top of that and uh, we'll talk about some other things. Now the next thing I want to do is go back to that bass track. So I've got the bass track selected and if you notice it's really just pedal point to this point where the, the bass stays on the same note and doesn't walk anywhere. We don't have any type of walking bass line or changes in the notes except for the last one here. So we want to add a little bit more variation here. But if you know nothing about music and how, to, how it works, you might say, well, how do I know where to move this note to give it some movement up and down? I don't know where to move it, but because we do have the color code to help us, even if you know nothing, you could just, you know, take it to the next um, available green note, either up or down. So that's exactly what we'll do here we'll maybe take it just down to an A2. And this note, which is blue, which means it's not exactly in a G major chord as one of the notes of the chord, but it's still in the scale. But for the bass, I want it to be solid in the bass, so I'm going to move that to a green note. And just for variety, I might just move this to something other than where it is right now. Again, this isn't to make music here. This is just a demonstration of the, techni the technical aspects of how you create your own multi-track uh, to be used in Remedy, you know, technically how you would do it. So now we at least have a moving bass and we can listen to what we have. Remember, turn off everything performance-wise inside a scalar. We don't want double notes being triggered. So that's slightly better than just having that same note kind of pedal pointing just across and not moving. Um, and in some cases you want that, but not in all cases. And this simple demonstration is, is better to break up that bass and have it walk a little bit up and down. All right, so we're making progress. Next, we're going to simply add in a performance again. So we can turn this back on over here in Scalar. And we can say that, well, let's add, try to add a little... Uh, as far as performances, maybe a melody. Uh, on top of that, we'll just go with, uh, I don't know, Motive 1 All. Let's listen to what that sounds like. And as far as note size, that's beautiful because it's not a short staccato note. It's more of a datache or small or short marcato, it actually wouldn't be a marcato, that'd be too strong. But it's a note size that we can change articulations and have some variance between pattern one and pattern two. That's the important thing. So we're going to grab this musical idea. And again, it's going to adhere to our original chord idea because we just highlight these notes now and we'll get that those notes, drag it in and release and we see that again we have the original chord notes but on top of it we have these beautiful little melodic lines that uh, we want to keep so we already have a bass and we can delete those notes and we probably could go in here and delete some of these chord like notes 
and I think that's what I will do so we don't get a bunch of duplicates and just keep this turned off now because we no longer need to, that working. Turn that off and we may want to keep that but I think we'll delete all the longer chord notes at least that we can see here. But this is a good start. This gives us a melody on top of some kind of a rhythmic idea here and we have our customized bass note and we have our original chords. And uh, so right now, we're uh, where we want to be, and we can listen to what we have. See, there's some, a little bit something going on there that we need to fix. And since these notes aren't 100% uh, in the chord, they are giving a little bit of... Uh, it's not working in this smooth, generic fashion. So simply grab those notes, make sure you're on, you're on the right track, and move them down. Again, even if you know nothing about music, the color scheme will show you what's right, at least at this point. And the, it goes without saying that if you want to make your music more beautiful, more interesting, you want to definitely go beyond just generic green chord notes. This is a demonstration of technique of creating these files, not musicality. So let's go back to the beginning and now these notes that were a little bit off now should be, uh, should be a nice smooth sound. And that's what we get. It's more generic and more safe, as, as it were. Um, so that is good. We have our four tracks that we're going to use for our uh, Remedy multi-track as a demo. And this original scaler now, we don't really need. But at this point, I would save your Cubase or your DAW project file just so that you have everything to come back to as a reference. Because as you learn how to do this, you'll want to come back, make changes, come back, enhance, make more changes and alterations, and expand upon this original idea. So definitely save out at this point. Next, we're going to move things into position, at least as far as how Remedy needs to have it positioned. And uh, we'll do that now. Remedy maps things differently. Uh, then your DAW has things mapped. So if I was to just select these tracks we just created and the, the MIDI portions here um, and save it out as a MIDI file, when it opens inside of Remedy, it these might be mapped to C4, C2, C-1. It may be who knows where it's going to be on your keyboard. Depending on the size of your keyboard, you may have an 88 key controller. You may have a 61 note controller. You won't know where it's going to show up on your keys. We want to be able to control that. So from my tests that if you uh, move everything and we really just to keep things simple, we don't need the scaler right now this, but of course you want to save that out. But I'm going to delete this track because we don't need that right now for demo purposes. But take everything, lasso it, including your chord track, because uh, that'll be relevant if you want to make changes, and just drag this to bar start 36. So now we're way over here on bar 36 inside the DAW. And from my testing, um, uh, bar 36, if you save it here, um, that will show up at C1 on your controller, at least on a 76 key controller. That's where it shows up for me. You may have to do some testing on your own, but eventually you'll find out if for your controller where this will show up and then you can just make adjustments. But for a 76 no controller, start at bar 36 and at C1 you will have, um, you know, that first key, you, on C will be the C major, then the next will be the F, then the G and the F and the C and the E. So now I'm going to just tell you exactly why that's important. In Remedy, when you 
press one note on your keyboard down with your finger, it will play and loop these four beats of the C major chord right here. So it'll play this one measure of music, four beats, depending on how you have your DAW set up for beats and bars and measures, but it will loop um, this measure right here. So um, that's how you have to think when you're saving out these files. You want one bar or one measure of these notes, which would be all these notes right here, and they will play as long as I hold my finger down on the key. If I hold down and lift up halfway through and then switch to another key, then it will play F and start to play the notes in the F measure here. And that's why it's so versatile. You can go from the C, play one beat of C, then go to a G, play two beats here, go to the E minor, play all the way, all four beats there, and then go back and play the C again. And you have, in essence, a brand new chord progression you just created on the fly. And that's what makes this so powerful. At least it's one reason why this is so powerful. Instead of having one chord progression, if this is done in a way that follows a lot of musical rules, and depending on how many of those rules you know, you can create chord progressions that you can jump all the, all over the place and have beautiful musical ideas happening and go from one chord progression to hundreds of different, you know, uh, takes on that progression. So that's what you want to keep in mind. One note on your keyboard, starting at C1, will play one chord here, which also has all these notes in it, and as long as you hold it down, it will play right through and then loop. It'll just loop this portion over and over. Or your finger may just go over, play, as I said, one note of the bar, one beat of the bar, and then pop to something else. And you have musical variety because, again, if it's set up properly, you can just do that over and over and come up with so many different ideas and record those ideas, capture those ideas on the fly. So this one progression with just one pattern style ends up being changed so many different ways. And that's just with the basics of basics with just six chords in the progression and with just four different uh, patterns of notes, just simple chords, bass, pattern one and two. Imagine if you had 40 different chords and 50 or 60 different types of patterns, all adhering to the fundamentals of harmony and composing music. And that's where your imagination can just fly from here, because this is just the beginning and just a tutorial to show the mechanics of getting to step A. One other consideration is, if I zoom way out, you can see that um, bar one is way over here. And so when you're creating a MIDI file, um, at least from my uh, experiments, in this case, you should select all your MIDI tracks and drag it out to bar one. And these, all this can be empty here. But when you're creating the file, it's a very good idea to, um, and I should do one other thing here. And that is, just select that, set your loop point. So when you're creating a loop point, you want it to include this entire range from one to wherever your musical idea and patterns end. This might go all the way to, you know, fill your keyboard up full of patterns and chord progressions. So, but for now, just make sure you have your looper set to encompass the whole thing and make sure these aren't, any of these tracks aren't uh, muted. You can and should mute your chord track. But that means now when I export this MIDI file, it will export every track that's not muted and it will export the entire loop range. And that includes all our music, all our notes here. And the chord track will not be included because it's muted and we don't want that. So really drag it out because if you don't, 
um, these notes might end up um, mapped out on your MIDI keyboard somewhere where you don't want them. I found that, and there may be a better way to do this. If you know a better way, let me know in the comments. But I found that if I drag this out and set it to number one, I, I know that C major will show up on my keyboard at C1 major, the first note, and that's where I know it will be, and that's where I want it to be. You may want it to be at uh, C3 on your keyboard, but at least now you know the mechanics of how that would be. C3 on the keyboard would probably be, it would be actually, there's 12 of these to an octave, so um, 12 notes. So that means you would go 12 down and then another 12 down. So somewhere up here would be C3 on your keyboard. So just keep that in mind if that's how where you want your remitty trigger notes to be on your system. And now it's just a matter when it's set up like this to go to file, export, MIDI file, and just follow the prompts, save it, don't make any changes, at least for a general MIDI file or basic MIDI file. Save it somewhere on your hard drive. And then once you do that, you just start uh, remitting up and then load it. And I'll just demo that before we go here. All right, so we have Remedy open now. And say I save this test file as test 45, I would select it and double click on it, which will load it to your next available block right up here. And you'll see that it loads it everything selected at once. And generally you don't want to do that. So I clear it and I said, oh, just show me the course. And there's our course that we just created and the base and the patterns. And you want to just separate them out. And I would create four uh, re-MIDI tracks, and I would name it. And I showed this in other videos, so from here it's basically continued other videos. But um, I would create the remedy, remedy chord track, duplicate that, create the remedy bass track, duplicate that, and call it, change it to uh, pattern one track, pattern two. So I'd have four remedy controllers, and I would set each one to its proper. So the first one would be set to chords, and then I would uh, duplicate that, set the next one, turn that off, set the next one to bass, turn that off. So you would have four controllers, each one with one track on. And then from there, as I've showed in other videos, several other videos, you can assign different instruments to different remitted controllers. But in this demo, that shows you how you actually make your own Remedy customized MIDI multi-track. Um, from here, it's only up to your imagination of what can be done from that. Because I really spent the last two years expanding on this first basic idea to a place where now the original idea has just expanded so greatly that um, it's just, it would take... And I, I don't want to be dramatic, but it would take, you know, overly dramatic. But I, I, it would take like 10 hours of videos to show what you could do just from how far I've gotten now from this original idea. But I'll leave that to your imagination. Hope you enjoyed this little video and that it will get you at least to a place where you can start to experiment with your own Remedy multitracks. Hope you had a good day. Hope you had a safe day wherever you're at in the world. It was really nice meeting some of the new people on our Discord channel. Some really great people there. Hope you join. And we'll see you on the next video.